each of us lives in lots of different worlds. Worlds inside, worlds outside that we share with others. And there's no clear boundary between the inside and the outside worlds. Many times we bring the outside in, and we go out to inhabit the outside. And so it's no wonder that we frequently get knocked off balance, because we don't really know what world we really inhabit. Because it's the nature of our world to be unstable. And our outside worlds are especially unstable because we're negotiating those with other people who are in the same worlds. It's like those vast computer games, of alternate realities where lots of other people are playing at the same time. You're never really safe. You're never really sure who you're with. And if you need to inhabit that world, you have needs that you impose on them. They have needs that they impose on you. And the very conditions of being in a world is unsafe. It's going to crash down on you sometime if you're not careful. This is why when we meditate we're trying to develop an inner world. that we can inhabit with a fair degree of stability, at least enough stability so we can gain our sense of balance and have a sense of home. And so that you can watch yourself when you go out to inhabit those other worlds. You can ask yourself, why are you going? What do you want? What can you do? Because sometimes you're going out to the world for your own interest, and sometimes you're concerned about others. Sometimes your motivation is good, skillful. Sometimes it's good, but not skillful. Sometimes it's neither good nor skillful. But it's so much second nature that we hardly stop to think. We just go out, go out, go out. Then we come back in, we bring the outside world back in, so we don't really know where we are. The purpose of the meditation is to have a clear sense of belonging here, and have enough mindfulness and alertness so that when you do go out, you're clear about your motivation, and you can choose. If the motivation is good and skillful, you go. But you realize that you're going out basically on a foray. You're not going out to inhabit that other world. You're not going out to move in. You're going out because there's good things to be done, skillful things to be done, and when you've done them, you come back home. So the first order of business is to establish this as your true home. Gain a sense of being at ease here. This is why we focus on the breath, because the breath of all the different elements and properties of the body is the one that's closest to the mind, and it's the one that you can use to adjust all the other properties. So that you feel at home. I said this morning, the breath is like knowing how to run the thermostat in your home. When it's too hot outside, you can come in and cool things down. When it's too cold outside, you can come in and warm things up. So it's important that you develop a sense of being at home with the breath, familiar with the breath, knowing all of its ins and outs. And using the breath so that you can really inhabit the whole of your body, so you can really be comfortable inside your own skin.
focus on the breath until it's comfortable. Find what rhythm and texture you like right now. And then gradually work through the body to see how the way you breathe relates to the different parts of the body. Are there some parts of the body that you tense up when you breathe in, or that you squeeze when you breathe out? Try to breathe in and out without tensing or squeezing. And then check the rest of the body to see if there are any other spots that you need to monitor in this way. Keep this up. Try to go systematically through the body. You could start at the navel and go up the front, down the back, out the legs, and then start at the back of the neck again and go out the shoulders and the arms. Or you can start at the back of the neck. You can start anywhere, as long as you have a plan for how you're going to go through the body. After you've done this many times, you begin to get a sense of your own idiosyncrasies and how you breathe, which parts need to be focused on. So you may have tension in the hip, tension in your shoulders. And then you learn, can you focus on those spots first, or do you have to wait until you've negotiated other parts of the body before you go into the really heavy areas of pressure. In other words, you learn to make the meditation your own. John Lee gives basic principles, but each of us has his or her own peculiarities in the way you hold your body. the way you tense the body when you breathe, and what's the most comfortable way of learning how to release that tension. Sometimes you find when you release the tension, the body feels unbalanced. So even holding pressure in one part of the body, when you let it go, it seems to move off to another part of the body and get stuck. For a lot of people, things get stuck up in the head. So when you find that happening, think of the energy flowing down the front of your neck, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out-breath. In other words, learn how to inhabit your body with a sense of ease and comfort, fullness, satisfaction. Breathe in a way that feels gratifying. And then learn how to sh share that gratifying feeling with all the different parts of your body. In other words, learn how to fully inhabit this world that you create around the breath. And keep monitoring it so that it stays a comfortable place to stay, a good place to stay, a solid place to stay. Now you find that your thoughts tend to wander off because you've got all those other issues outside. But for the time being, tell yourself the best way you're going to handle those issues is to s focus right here. Concerns about other people, your worries about situations that have happened. Regardless. The best way to handle those situations is for you to be well established here inside, so that you're coming from a position of strength, a position of inner nourishment and ease. So that when you go out, it's not that you're going out of hunger or out of fear. You're going because you have genuinely compassionate motives skillful intentions. Now, if you catch yourself moving out without skillful intentions, realize that that's just what the Buddha calls becoming. It's a created little world, which if you inhabit it, is going to come crashing down. So you do your best to get out. It's 
like one of those dreams you find yourself in where things get more and more confining. And suddenly remember, even though the dream seems hopeless, it is just a dream you can get out. You wake up. So whatever the little world that you create, if you find that it's a dangerous world, a precarious world, an unskillful world, you don't have any commitment to it. You can step back into the body. And having the body as your foundation helps you also judge your dealings with other people. When you can be helpful, what the most helpful thing might be. And when you can't help, what to do in a case like that, how to read the situation. Because you have a lot of things invested in the situation. That's one of those outside worlds that you're trying to inhabit and you want to make it as good as possible. And you've got those mixed motives. In other words, you're making it as good as possible for yourself and you like to think you're making it as good as possible for the other person. But those mixed motives are very, very uncertain, because your commitment to inhabiting that world can also blind you to the other person. But if you know you've got a good, solid place to stay here, then you don't have to inhabit that other world. You don't have to invest your happiness there, or invest your hopes for happiness there. You can engage in that world when it seems to be skillful, and you can return here when you find that it's not. And as you place less of a burden on that outside world, you find that you're actually more helpful. It's easier to have feelings of goodwill for the other person. And it's easier also to develop equanimity when that's the skillful choice, the skillful response. This is why meditating is not a selfish act. It puts you in a position where you can be more skillful, both in your inside world and your inside worlds and your outside worlds. When you have a clear sense of which world you can really inhabit and which world you simply go into on foray. So while you're here, make, take advantage of the opportunity to get as solidly established in this inside world. Like I said, be as comfortable as possible in your own skin. This energy field that you have in the body. As you learn how to inhabit this world, you find that you can deal with other worlds with a lot less suffering. 